You picked you picked two two good topics today. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, this is kind of things that popped up while we were um, doing um, Caddy Choi's. Um, she was leading the, uh, the, you know, the the diploma program on uh, selected uh, sutras in um, Chinese Buddhism, and I'm really new to the Mahayana stuff. You know, haven't really studied much of it at all. So that's, it was yeah, it was a lot of information for me, and I haven't even even read much of the core sutras. You know, uh, that that were that were talked about in there. So. I'm so pretty convinced that I'm I'm pretty convinced that Mahayana is all about extraterrestrial beings. Uh, well, that's I mean that's the beauty of it I I think because um, it just shows how vast and profound existence and reality can be you know and you know I run with a lot of different metaphysical circles too so I'm versed in a lot of that stuff um, uh, so it's, it's translating between different systems of metaphysics as well too while keeping uh, in mind, you know, the simile of the arrow, right? Uh, you know that one, right? We talked about no. that, right? You get, no. you, um, uh, the guy gets shot with an arrow, but before he wants it pulled out, he wants to know what's, uh, what is the arrowhead made of, you know, who uh, fletch, flesh, fletched the shaft of the arrow, you know, what yeah. bird did the feathers come from. Um, yeah. Yeah. He wants to know all this stuff, but, but by the time he figures all that out, he's dead from the arrow. So right. that, that's what I think the Buddha's metaphor was for the metaphysics. That's, that's, that's right? stop so, the blood, so it's blood like, flowing. But, yeah, you yeah. need to know exactly what you need to know for the suffering. That's why he only taught suffering. Then again, you know, the parable of the leaves, you know, well, where did he get that knowledge from, you know? Mm -hmm. He obviously had a ton of that knowledge beforehand, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he said, uh, you know, what's more numerous, the leaves in my hand or the leaves in the forest? The leaves in his hand, well, that's what he only taught. But he my, had... my problem, My problem with all that discussion is that I, I, I came from academia. I taught oh. university for nine years. So you I understand why you need to talk about, you know, <laughs> when you talk about arithmetic, algebra, geometry, calculus, and then, you know, finally to general relativity. I, I understand all that conversations, how one always related to another that, you know, before I, we can talk about general relativity, maybe we should just start with arithmetic, you know. And then, of course, you know, halfway through arithmetic, some smart kid would say, well, what is this all about? <laughs> so I, I understand all that. I, I just think that, um, I, 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 I see it from both sides, and this, this discussion of Hanayana is exactly that. It's exactly that. It's, 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 uh, you know, so so you, you're looking at it, it's, it's really the parable of, of the, the blind touching, you know, feeling the elephant, and each one describing the elephant. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. classic. You know, yes. so, so you have these two cam that talks about the, 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 the big vehicle and the little vehicle, you know, except that the guy who you refer to as little, little vehicle, he says, well, we don't know what you're talking about. We were here 300 years before you guys. <laughs> so you must be talking about him. <laughs> you know how that works, right? When you, when you get in an argument and, and people are, are putting you down, you say, well, no, no, you can't be talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, it, you see from a Westerner perspective, like I said, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I, I mean, I can definitely see where they, you know, it's kind of like a uh, uh, like a pissing contest, right, kind of thing. Well, know, the, the, the thing is that the thing is that I'm 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 struggling with all that now and, and mm -hmm. trying to digest all that because um, Master had this three day um, uh, retreat on. The, on Zoom, that was um, uh, uh, probably like three, four weeks ago. Okay. It was it was it was actually a Memorial Weekend. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah. Was it Memorial or Labor? I forgot which. The, the well, I get those time. confused too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So whichever the long weekend, yeah. and so mm -hmm. um, a group of students from um, uh, Los Angeles had organized that. So we all tried to jump to that, huh. and it was in Mandarin. It was in Mandarin, which is tough for me, but on the other hand, we, we recorded it, and then uh, we actually um, went through a lot of, we did a lot of work to put in the Chinese subtitle. Okay, so I, I, had, I had a lot of opportunity to really, you know, like dive deep into his teaching. And so, so he's, he actually, he actually his, his approach now is, is he's integrating what one would call uh, Hanayana versus, you know, Mahayana. And in fact, the story was that um, I remember uh, visiting a Thai temple once with him and 
the the um, the abbot that we were supposed to meet got stuck in traffic, so we were we were just there with, with all the all the monks, and and of course master speaks Thai, and so they were conversing. They were very happy to see a guy who who's obviously not Thai speaking Thai, and master was very excited because he hadn't practiced Thai in a long time. So then came another monk that looked just like the other all the all the other monk, except that turns out that he doesn't speak Thai even though he's, he's Thai, Thai in origin. So he was somebody who was born here, and he speaks only English. So he walked up to, to Master and says, Oh, you're from, you are uh, Mahayana. Right? Because, you know, he wears different uniforms. So Master said, No, I am Buddha Yana. <laughs> it's a great story. I remember that one, yes. It's, yeah. uh, and he does, you know, he says he pa practices more Theravada at night and Mahayana during the day. It's a, such a unique path and we're, I just feel so blessed and grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, except that, except that in the end, I think what he said is that it's not a choice. Huh. It's, it, it's not it, like it you explains. can choose, yep. it's not like there's, you know, there's, um, door number one, door number two, and you can pick whichever door, door you goes to, and then it goes to the end. No, he he actually came out and says, no, there there, there is no choice. There, you, there's no, it's, it, you can't choose. You have to start with the basic. In fact, if you practice Mahayana, with the idea that that the core of the teaching is above the four immeasurables, that actually leads you astray because what happened is that um, you you the idea is that the, the, the four immeasurables, you know, you have, you start with compassion, love, love and kindness, and then, and then uh, empathetic joy, and then, and then ultimately get to equanimity. The problem is that since you don't have the equanimity practice, very quickly you're, you're, you become more attached. Yeah, so it's like, it's like going up, you know, so, so the, I, I, and I knew that, I knew that. And I knew that, I mean, from very early on when I met Master, and I, I remember telling him, I said, Master, you know, did you know that there are two kinds of, of uh, lifesavers? You know, like I said, I, I used to take my kids to the swimming pool, sure. and, and so, but, you know, I realized that it's outside the swimming pool, in the, especially in the temple, there are two kinds of, of, uh, of lifesavers. There's the kind who knows how to swim, is expert in swimming, but didn't want to save anyone. There's this other kind who wants to save someone, but he himself doesn't know how to swim. Hmm. <laughs> so, you get so much, so much in there, Denny. Um, before I forget what the okay, we should we I, should I, start. I, okay, okay, yeah. All right. Um, hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of AUA. Ask us anything. The original AUA. Uh, welcome again to Josh, Josh Depot, um, who who is joining us the second time. Uh, we 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 are we, last time was a month ago, All right? Good afternoon, Josh. How are you? Hey, Denny. What's going on? And um, uh, congratulations on all the the interviews you've done so far. So I'm glad I could play a small part in possibly some ins inspiration of what you've been doing with um, all the interviews and whatnot. And yeah, your continued dedication to Dhamma, Buddha Dhamma, and uh, yeah, it, it, like especially the daily practice, continue to do on Zoom. So you probably see that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. So we 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 we're, 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 uh, we're doing our best. You know, we're it's it's uh, like I said last time is that it this epidemic this the pandemic um, which continues. You know, it's it's it only it will only get worse as the months to come. And uh, it's, it's what I said about marriage. It doesn't get better, it just gets, you get more used to it. So the pandemic gets worse, but we get more used to it. <laughs> so, so you brought with you a bunch of questions. So why don't you pick one? And how about we pick the easy one? What does Master Jiru stands for? You know, that's probably one of the most um, pressing ones anyway, because, and most unique and specific that you'll probably not get anywhere else, right? So yeah, what does Jiru mean? Okay, so, so, so the name, the full name is, is Sikh Jiru, right? So all, all the, 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 the Chinese tradition is such that when a person becomes a monastic, whether he's a monk or a nun, he, he, he has to, um, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, give up or... or uh, renounce. Renounce, and when he, he actually, 
so, 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 so a lot of people think that becoming a monk just means that you renounce your family life, right? And, and where in fact, that's the last thing you re renounce. So, so there's actually three steps. You renounce all your dukkha, you know, all your, all your, all your, all your, all your uh, uh, defilements, all your um, uh, hindrances. Uh, at least uh, uh, you, you, you declare a path to that. The second thing you, you renounce, and this is the part that perhaps is, is least talked about, in the Western world of Buddhism is that you actually have to renounce uh, uh, samsara. You actually have to renounce uh, reincarnation. So again, it's, it's, a, it's a question of, of making a decision so that I don't have to, uh, I, I'm working towards um, Buddhahood, which means um, escaping uh, samsara, escaping uh, reincarnation. And then finally, you renounce your family life and, and Master Ju actually have a very interesting take on that. And he says, no, you don't renounce your family life so you can hide in a cage somewhere, hide in a cave somewhere. You can do that without actually becoming monastics, right? Anybody can do that. He says, actually, you renounce your family life so that you can dedicate yourself completely to serving the community. So he has a different take on that. So, so the Chinese tradition is that when you do that, you actually renounce your last name, your family name. And so they always have the last name, which is Sik, S-I-K, which, which comes from Sycamore. Sik, Sycamore, Sycamore. Sycamore is the name of our, our historical Buddha, once he became Buddha. So he had a different name before, and, and that was his given name too, and then, he was, and then, he, and then people would then refer to him as, as, as Sycamore. And Sycamore actually is two parts. The first part meant, is, is again his family, a part of his family. And then the, and then the last part meant that he's, he's the elders. He's the, he's the, he's the, he's the, the one who knows, right? So this is like, it's actually, so, so one part actually represents compassion and the other part uh, represents um, wisdom. The point is that all monastics in the Chinese tradition, they take on the last name, Sikh. And so, so Master's last name is actually Sikh, but his first name is, is Ji Ru or Ji Ru. And again, that's, that you can break that into two parts. The first word uh, means continue. Okay, so, so one of the things that you have to know is that uh, Chinese language is very complicated. Um, you, cannot, there, there, you cannot just take one character and say that's, that's, that's the meaning. You, you can't actually do that. And the, the meaning varies depending on what other word they conjugate with. And sometimes it, it, the meaning also takes on a historical uh, perspective as well. So, so for example, the other day um, in, in my Sunday night um, uh, uh, Dharma meeting uh, with the, uh, um, the volunteers that, that we, that for, the, for the prison, and they were, they were talking about what does it mean to save all beings? Save all being, and so I, I said, well, actually, the Chinese word doesn't mean save. The Chinese word is actually to guide. Ah. Uh. So I use the example that that it's a guide. It's the same word that we use if I were like the person who who rode the 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 boat, and I come to the shore of the river and I see you standing there, but I know that there is a a mudslide coming your way. I cannot just grab you and put you on my boat thinking that I will save all being. My job is not to save, my job is to guide. I, it, it, you would have to agree to it first. Right. So anyway, so, so Chinese characters are very complicated. You, you can't just uh, take one. But on the other hand, G, G uh, the most common explanation of that is to continue, to continue. Now, but keep in mind that that is the same among all of uh, Master's Dharma brothers. So the Chinese name always is, most likely is two characters. The first one is common for people who are of the same generation. So knowing that, you know what generation they are and who, who is possibly their master. Okay, so this is true even for, among us. So like I have two younger brothers, we all share the same first characters. Okay, okay now the second character, again, is very complicated. Um, it could mean a bunch of things, and but but since we are we are we are we are among friends, you know. So so it's the same word that appear in one of the ten epithet for Buddha. You know, the Buddha has like ten sure. different names that represent ten different virtues, 
And one of the one of the one in in Pali or in Sanskrit is is uh, Takagata. Takagata, I've heard it pronounced. Takagata, Takagata. Mm -hmm. So so there, there's actually two different um, um, uh, uh, interpretation for that because it depends on the gata, is G A T A, depending on if you attach the A to gata or you attach the A to the previous word or you, the A split. Because A is the opposite, and gata means to leave. A gata means to come. So, the, so that come one, yeah, yeah, that, that's the, the one, one who comes well, the one who comes, uh, you know. So, so, so the idea is that you and I come to this world, but when we come, we come with all the baggages. When Buddha comes to the world, he does not come with any of them. So he comes well, right? And so, so that that word well would be one way to interpret it, Master Xu. So, so in a way, it's a very good name. It's, it's, it's as if he's saying that I'm the one continuing you know, the, the work of the Buddha. Well, yeah, and that's uh, Tathagata. I always yeah. thought this, you know, what, why aren't we called Tathagata? Why isn't it called Tathagataism? You know, Tathagataism uh, instead of Buddhism. Um, it was, that's what he, uh, the historical Buddha referred to himself when people asked who he was. He it was depends the, on the sutra. That's right. It's a yeah, it depends on the sutra. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you look at the, the Diamond Sutra, that's the only thing they refer ah. to is Takata, Takata, ta, ta, ta. Yeah. It's Either way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but it, you can't really use one because all ten has different meaning. That's right, so for yeah. example, we, we, we talk about, you know, you mentioned about Hanayana. And mm -hmm. so if you say Hanayana is the practice of the people in the Southeast China, uh, Southeast Asia, you know, going from Sri Lanka to, to, to Burma and so forth, mm -hmm. then they don't talk about Buddhahood as much as they talk about being Arahan. That's right, yep. So well, before Arahan we... is one of the ten epithets too. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So before we transition into that, um, yeah. I'm going to address some of the things you said. Um, well, and then Tathagata, it's, I also heard the um, translation of when, when the Buddha referred to himself as Tathagata, it was like, um, it means like, I am thus. They say, you know, who are you? Well, I yeah, am thus. Yeah, I'm, li yeah. I'm like this. So he's yeah. kind of more like a verb than a mm -hmm. noun, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's interesting the wordplay on uh, Master Jiru's name, uh, Shifu's name. Uh, seek, you know, that's also the name of a religion. Oh well, no, 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 that's completely different. Oh, I know, different. I know. This is yeah. wordplay. This is totally right, different. Right, right, right. That, that's I'm completely about, different. You yeah. know how English spins things and right, has right, kind of right, similarities right, right. So, so in this case, it's, it's, yeah, it's the totally spelling is S-I-K, right. and the other one, the spelling is S-I-N-G-H. Yeah. Yes, it's just, it's just the wordplay and the puns in English I find uh, amusing. So, and there's also a tree called the sycamore, which is similar sounding to um, what you said too, right? <laughs> um, a sycamore, and there's plenty of sycamores that grow ar around uh, rivers around here too, our, our creeks. Mm -hmm. And then also, I, I the, like the uh, idea of guiding so much better than saving, because saving seems to have like a lot of, um, or can have some negative Christian baggage for those that aren't, don't consider themselves um, Christians or, or have been are getting out of that. I don't want to, you know, get in comfort. I had, you know, n obviously nothing against Christianity. It's, uh, I think it's very supportive. Um, I think Buddhism actually is supportive of a lot of that stuff too. Um, it's just that I like the guiding better because, you know, maybe some other time we'll go into my um, encounters. Well, no, it's, it's actually, um, you really, so, so again, you know, sometimes those words um, have, the, the, the true meaning of the words is, depends on the conjugation. But then the meaning of the word can also have depends on the historical um, historical uh, um, uh, you know, the historical interpretation. So, so a very very um, famous story was about um, the sixth patriot. And so the sixth patriot is an interesting person in that uh, number one he he is the one that actually. Um, so so the sixth patriot means that there's a first patriot which is Bodhidharma. And then eventually you get to the fifth patriarch, but in between they, they're basically like one off, okay. And then and then they very brief, very brief, a few years, and then they transfer another one. At few, and finally, when they get to the fifth patriarch, then then he started to really build up this Chan practice, or or what is now called Zen practice. And but it wasn't until the sixth patriarch that really took it. And so there's a saying that it's 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 one stem 
five flowers because then you know it becomes five different branches and soto zen and all that you know that and then eventually it took another thousand years before it before in another 800 years before they went to um went to uh, japan you know but the very famous story about the six patriot and this explains you know kind of put some historical context to the word what is served to guide or or to 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 relieve or or to uh to rescue the very famous story was that uh, the six patriot was actually illiterate, and so um, he he actually came to the, the the monastery where the fifth patriots are, and the fifth patriot recognized him, but he also understand the danger that he would be in because he's such an enlightened person, but yet he had no formal training, and so that could cause all kinds of problem with his his other other student. So he purposely pushed him to work in essentially the kitchen. And then one day he, he had this, you know, he asked him to come. And so he came to his room and they, the story was that they, they, were, they were transmitting his, his, you know, his, his wisdom. And then when it's all done, then the fifth patriot was the one that took the gasa, which is the, the uniform, and the bow. And he says, now, you know, from now on, you are the sixth patriot, but let's get out of here because... You're now in, in danger. So they, they, they together they, they went down to the bottom of the mountain the, the mountain where the temple is, to the river. And so the so the so the so the so the fifth patriot says, Let me guide you across to the river. Right? Which would be what it, that would be what we would say, because the sixth patriot came from afar. He doesn't know the, the area. The fifth, the fifth patriot is the one that knows the area. So he says, let me guide you. Let me help you to cross the river. And so he had a very famous saying, which is the sixth patriot says, well, when I am, what's the word? What's the opposite of enlightened? When, when I am asleep, when I'm asleep, yeah. you guide me. Now that I'm enlightened, I would have to guide myself. Uh-huh. And it's the same word they use in the verses where it says, you know, how to, um, how to, uh, what's the word that I was using earlier, how to uh, save all beings. So yeah. it doesn't, so, so I, uh, my point is that it's not save, it's the guy, mm-hmm. but it's more than that because think about it, right? So, so the, the fifth patriot put himself in the position where he would provide the manual labor. So he is so 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 embedded in that word is a sense of service, a sense of so 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 it's very different from saving all beings. So saving beings had this connotation, you know, that I am here to save. I you know mm-hmm. you follow right? right? Yeah. So in this case, it's more like if you want to guide me, you have to come from. You would come from the angle. that says, Danny, I'm very humble. I would want to provide that service to you. I know the way. I'm not the expert, but I know the way. And if you're willing, come with me and together we'll go across. Something like that. See, this is a great uh, point that needs to be addressed. And I've got, um, I'll eventually get to a blog post where I have all these different questions about Arhat versus, or not versus, well, maybe, but Arhat and Bodhisattva, you know, and how they complement, but also how the questions I have about them, since I'm, I'm new to this. But this is a key point for me because, um, you know, how do we help others without stepping on their journey? You know, you know well, what I mean? Because so, 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 perfect, so what is the perfect way, what you just described is... is Josh, is but that, that's a very, very important point because, mm-hmm. because the Buddhist teaching prevent us from knocking on doors. Ah, uh, that's a good metaphor. We, we can't just come to your house, knock on your doors and say, hey, well, what do you think? <laughs> we can't. And, and keep in mind that all sutras are basically a record of the dialogue between the historical Buddha and his disciple. It's always ask and answer, ask and answer. Right? You notice that all the sutras, discourse, there's, there's, some, there's a discourse, yes. there's, there's somebody in there who says, Master, what do you think? <laughs> there are very few exceptions. There are actually very few exceptions where, 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 where the Buddha says, well, you know, yes. I, this is what I feel like talking today. Very few exceptions. Yeah. Most of them are ask and answer, ask and answer. Mm-hmm. 
very uh, unique teaching style too because yeah. yeah. And and then he redefined a lot of term terminology of his day yeah. too. Yep. Now one of the question you asked, one of the question you mm-hmm. you suggest, one of the point of, the point of discussion you suggest is is this whole thing about karma. Oh yeah. So that so this idea so of po- ask. Let, let yeah, me set this, this up just a little bit. Yeah. It was such a popular topic in the classes yeah. I'm taking. Everybody's yeah. so fascinated by it, and the Western interpretation of it is obviously very misguided in popular culture anyway. Yeah. So, so yes, so, so a, the, a little. Let's start with a little, literal translation of the word, which I've yeah. heard. Action. Let, let, let's do that. But let me let action. me just kind of use that to finish off the discussion sure. that we have about Transition, about yes. guiding. So, in fact, we, we 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 it's the idea that we shouldn't teach unless the person is ready for the teaching goes so deep that because later on we talk about karma. Karma. The idea is that. You have your own karma, and I have mine. And so, for me to, ju- you know, jump into your face and says, you know, here is, you know, I actually would perturb your karma. Actually, I might actually de- uh, delay your path because now all of a sudden, because of my interjection, you have this aversion to the teaching. Then you know, instead of going, you, you know, on your own, you would have like. A straight way, and now you detour, and that would be my fault. You know, okay. So, so sorry, sorry for interrupting you. So, no, so, it's perfect. Um, yep. so um, we have two important topics. I'm not sure we can do all that today, but one one has to do with karma, and one has to do with hanayana. And you mentioned that maybe, maybe, maybe uh, karma should be a, a more urgent topic. You think? Yes, because I think even the Dalai Lama said that that's is if I'm getting this right, that's something that he wanted Westerners to kind of really understand and comprehend. And I just think it's such a misunderstood or misrepresented in Western culture, uh, especially in popular culture. You know, the the common you know misinterpretation is, oh, that's their karma, right? Oh, oh that's mm-hmm. it's karma, which basically means. You're, it's it's like a uh, a punishment system for doing something bad. I mean that is the the horrible oversimplified misunderstanding of it in popular culture in the West, and that I feel that needs to be rectified. The thing is that it's so like I was saying, it's 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 a vast and profound teaching, but it can also be quite simple uh, with cause and effect. But actually, I'm not um, very schooled on this. I want to have you give a what you did in the show notes is a great rundown and give that. Um, and then maybe I can talk, uh, the, the one that I feel more comfortable about talking about this part is intent that's involved in karma. But why don't you just give a whole, like, um, a rundown overview, whatever you feel important is important. And then, uh, you know, I brought up, it's actually one of the imponderables, which is, um, you know, if you start looking into every single detail and investigating all of it, it, the there's a chance the Buddha said that you could go mad doing so. Although there's also some very straightforward teachings uh, listing different types of karma that we can study. So my question was basically, you know, how do we, um, how, uh, you know, how do how do we understand it first, and then how uh, how do we study what we can, uh, you know, safely. Um, Basically, that yeah, that's that was the, the question. Yeah, I, I think I think the understanding karma is probably the the most important discussion one can have with regard to Buddha's teaching. So so I I think I I always like to go back to history, and I always like to go back to the time. And and what was the what was the historical context? Is is this true? If I want to study. Uh, Buddha's teaching, or it's true if I want to study um, uh, Jesus' teaching. You know, so in in Jesus' case, it's you know he he's a, he's a Jew, and he was basically born in a colony, and the colony was was uh, was the the, the colonialists uh, are the Rom- Romans, and so there was a lot of um, social injustice between the conqueror who were the Romans, and then the people who are actually the administrators, which are the Jews, and then also the the people. And so I, rather than just like look at the Bible, and I always question who wrote the Bible as, as much as I question who wrote the Sutra, I would rather go back to the historic history because I at least that I understand the history and I can see well. Forget you know Jesus as the Son of God, 
put that aside, yes or no, I don't care, that doesn't matter. But what was he trying to do? What did he see with his eye and what were he trying to do given his intellect? I would, I would do the same thing with the historical Buddha, which is 600, 550 years before the birth of Christ. And now I ask myself, well, what was happening then in, in North India? And so one of the things that I would point out is if you, if you look at the, the sign, the Buddha sign, is identical to the one used by the Nazis. Oh, yeah. Except, no, the Nazis is reversed. No. Doesn't it point the other way? That's the, what the, people try to say, is that uh, they're, they're, one, is, one uh, is one and one. No, but if you visit the enough temple, you will realize that we will use it same. both directions. Oh, but, I of see, course, okay. we make the distinction just because uh, we don't, you know, because yes, right. otherwise. Okay. But on the other hand, we have to accept that. And so, for, I mean, now we don't have the Olympics this year, but had we had the Olympics this year, one of the big things in Japan is that they have to take down all those signs. It just, it just it causes problem with people. You know? I haven't followed that, but we, maybe I can, I can yeah. look at that later. In fact, I, I think like, if you look at some of the, stat, the Buddha statue in Maba, mm -hmm. uh, Master Ju actually went to great length to never have that symbol. Huh. Well, it, it's so unfortunate because, you know, a lot of times people in, in power that are negative, they'll, they'll invert a symbol or they'll, they'll co-opt a symbol and yeah. completely pervert it and so, invert it too. Yeah, you know? but, but putting that aside, the question yes. is that why, why the symbol? Well, what I've heard is it's a sun symbol, which is, I don't know. I'm sure there's all kinds of different things, but that's a, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a short because answer. Because it's the same symbol because, because Hitler and, and Buddha share the same heritage. Oh, Aryan, both, the Aryans? They're both Aryans. Okay. And so, 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 so Buddha was born 600 years before Christ and about a thousand years before that, maybe more, maybe a few thousand years before that was one migration of the Aryans, the migration of the Aryans. So, so you will notice that in India, you have different shades of skin. You have the lighter and the darker. This is true in Iran and in Egypt. Okay. A lot of the, the, the conquerors came with the Aryans. And, and so the question is that why was that so easy for them to conquer? Well, because they have, they have advances in metallurgy that even today we don't understand. Okay, and so, but in any case, they worship Brahman. And so when we talk about, you know, atheists versus polyatheists versus, versus monoatheists, we, we talk a great deal about the um, Abraham religion, which consists of Catholics, Protestants, and the Muslims and so forth, because their common ancestor is, is Abraham. Yeah. That, that we call that the monotheist, that there's only one God. But the Aryans have only one god too, and that's that's the that's the the Brahman, the Brahma, Brahman king, the Mahabrahman, right? So 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 the Aryans came to to um, to India, the India continent, and the the, the original Indians were much darker skin. In fact, the, they share the same DNA as the native, the uh, 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 the, the, the the people in in Australia. Because once upon a time, India and Australia were one, and so the people there have the same DNA, right? So you have this, this, this stratification of people, conquerors, and so forth. So eventually they set up this, this caste system, and the caste system was such that the people on the very top were the, the, the people who can have a dialogue with their god, which in this case is Brahman. No different than the Jewish. No different. Then you have the, the royalties. And then the you have class. Yeah. and then and then and then then you have the 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 merchants the, the, the merchants and so forth and so on. And then you have like the lower lower class. Now keep in mind that all four are still Aryans. So there's a misunderstanding thinking that the natives are the lowest. Class. No, the natives don't even count. They're, they're below the four, okay. So to a point where if, the, if one, of the, one of the lower one, if they want to buy a, 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 a food, they would have a dish where they drop the money into the dish and then they would throw the food on the floor. They won't touch them. So that's why it's called untouchable. Now, the idea of karma starts there. The idea of karma actually starts there. And the idea of karma is that if I am of the upper caste, my karma would be that I would come back as the upper caste. That's my karma. 
And then if your karma is in the lower caste, then your, your karma would be such that you will come back as that. Okay? So, so when you say that there's a misunderstanding of karma, I, I wouldn't say that it's a misunderstanding. I would say that it was the original understanding. And if, it's, if that's your understanding, that you haven't learned anything from, from Buddha. What Buddha did was say, he said, no, that can't be the case. And so he was, actually, he was actually a social revolutionary. He was basically trying to undo the justice, which was very deep. But what he did was that he wasn't trying to overthrow anyone. He was trying to put a rug under them, which is that if you think that karma meant that, no, karma does not mean that. Okay, so, so what, does, what, does, what, does, um, what does karma mean in, 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 uh, in, in, the, in the Buddhist teaching? So, so he then talks about this dependent origination, right? So that's just a little too deep, but let me give you a, a much simpler example. If you, if you go out to your garden and you want to plant tomato, you have to start with the tomato seed. If you didn't have the tomato seed, you would never have tomato, okay? So you plant, you plant the tomato seeds and then now you have tomato. Well, guess what? The tomato has seeds. So it it's never ends, okay? Once you plant the seed, it doesn't end, it just goes from there. But more important than that, in order for that seed to become a fruit, you have to have the condition. Condition means that, oh, I actually have to plant it first, and if I plant it on cement, it will never grow. So I have to find a, a soil. But not only that, but you know, I have to water, I have to keep it away from the elements, I have to fertilize, I have to spend time to, you know, remove the weeds, and then I have to build a, a, a trellis, you know, for the, for the, I have to do all of that in order for the seed to become the fruit. So the question is, what is karma? Well, karma is both the seed and the fruit. Because karma is one of the eight consciousness that makes up of our existence. Okay, so, so you can talk about uh, our existence in terms of the eight consciousness, or you can talk about in terms of the five standards. They're actually the, the same, they're just different ways of uh, classifying. So what, what does it mean when you classify it as, as five standards? Well, there's the form, and then there's everything else, right? So the form includes everything that is physical, our eyes, our nose, our tongue, our ear, our skin, and our brain. Right? and our brain. That's, that's what we call the sixth sense store, the sixth uh, root. The consciousness is the electricity that was generated by these, these organs. Okay, so there's, there's, there's six, there are six consciousness that are associated with the form. So when my eye sees you, you are the stimulus. Right? So you're the color, you're the, you're the microwave, or you're the whatever it is that impinges on my eye, and my eye generates electricity. So, so right away we have these three different domains. There is the physics, there is the physiology, and then there is the neurology. So the, the, the six of the consciousness has to do with neurology. The eye consciousness, the nose, so the eye would be sight, the, no, the nose would be smell, the tongue would be taste, the, the body would be touched. And then finally, it goes into the brain. The brain generates a, what we call the mental action, the mental volition, right? So if I, if I want to beat somebody up, it starts with that before I actually make it into a physical action. There's a mental action, right? So those, that, that accounts for the five, the six consciousness. Now, each of the consciousness can be both a seed or a fruit. It's the fruit when the eye interacts with, with the outside world, right? In this case, the cause and the effect is such that the eye consciousness is the fruit, is the effect. However, when the eye, the ear, the nose collects all the data and it feeds it into the last organ, which is the brain, they are now the seed. They are now the seed, which then causes the final mental action, which is the fruit. So cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. So what happened then? 
what happened then? Well, there's the seven consciousness or the eight consciousness. So today we want to talk about eight consciousness, which is the karma. So what is karma? It depends on what you want to talk about. Is it a seed or is it a fruit? So what does it mean? Well, first of all, we go back to neurology. Neurology, meaning that consciousness is electrical. Okay? So the universe is all about electricity. However, we also know that when you have electricity, you have magnetism. It's physics. You cannot have electricity without magnetism. So if I think that this is a, a piece of wire, and that's why we do like qigong and all the things that like yijing jing and meditation, all that, is, is actually playing with electricity and magnetism because when we have blood flow, it's electricity, it generates magnetic field and then the magnetic field can couple into a different part of the body and causes you know, um, a lot of the phenomenon that we can only witness when we're in meditation. But in any case, when you have a thought, the thought is electrical. It generates magnetic field. And when you generate magnetic field, it leaves a memory. It leaves a memory. So karma, in this case, is just a memory. So for all the mental action that we have, it leaves behind a memory. Now, now before, we, before we go on, this is actually very scientific. So, so what is that movie called? I, I just, it, the name just escapes me. Um, talked about time travel. There was that movie called about time travel. Oh, there's a lot of Hollywood movies about time, time travel. Yeah, yeah, the one I'm thinking of, the one I'm thinking of, so, so anyway, he, he, he is the one that, um, I, know, I wish I were more prepared. So, so you would see okay. all that in, 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 you know, the physicists talk about all that. Mm -hmm. That, that, that you, can, you can do tr uh, time travel, but of course, in the only, physics only allow traveling to, to the past. It doesn't allow traveling to the forward. Okay? So, so anyway, I'm going off tangent, but the point is that karma in this case is a memory. It's a memory. So for all the things, all the good things you've done, all the bad things you've done, it leaves behind a, a memory. Now, that same karma can also be a seed. Because every time you have a mental action, the external stimulants are from the, the eyes, the nose, the ear, but there's also an internal stimulant, which is the karma. For the same reason that when you generate electricity, electricity leave behind magnetism, then the next time you want to generate, when you want to generate electricity, you actually need magnet. You can't generate electricity without magnetism. You cannot, the, the two goes in the other. Sure. Electricity generate magnetism, which is a memory, okay, meaning that something get magnetized. And it's the magnetizations that allows you to generate electricity. And now I'm going to throw you a curveball, and we're talking all about mental activity, specifically thought. Yeah, all electrical, so, all so electricity. When, yeah. So when we, when we quiet the mind, or this is, you know, like maybe a mind of an arhat, that what I hear is they are only... They can still think, but they, they only think if they, if they want to think. So there's other forces, too, in physics. So with outside the mental sphere, you have, like, vibrational energy instead of, in, in a, as opposed to electrical, chemical, magnetic, and, um, and, and frequency stuff. You have vibrational, and then you also have a radi uh, radiation, right? So these are other types of energy that I, I won't go into some of the metaphysics that people uh, say about electromagnetism versus other types of energy and, you know, what's supposed to be more natural and whatnot. But that's a whole other thing. Cause another curveball would be these drugs that they give to um, people in surgery um, are these medical drugs that will help them forget certain uh, procedures. Yeah, but none of that has to do with the mind. There. None of that has to do with the mind. So we're, we're, we're actually confusing Okay. what mind is. So the, when Buddhists talk about mind, they talk about beyond material. That's another thing I was going to ask about. Yeah. The, you know, but when, you when, the psychiatrist, was... when the psychiatrists talk about mind, and when, they, when you talk about how you can induce, you know, uh, uh, they're talking about the brain. Right. 
and that's just a physical manifestation. But yeah. now you did you did say that it was linked to um, uh, the the what, what was it? Well, the question I have in the formless realm because didn't you say that consciousness was dependent on a brain? So if you have a formless realm, there's still consciousness involved in the formless. Oh yeah, realm. absolutely. This is kind of off the deep end, and we're not really no 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 no. This, no, but, but yeah. we, we want to talk about that. We want to talk about that. But but okay. before we talk about that. Mm -hmm. We need to address the issue, which is the sort of the common discussion, the common understanding of karma. Because the one of the yes, things people karma. will say is that, yeah. hey, it's in your karma. That's, mm -hmm. you know, what do you want? It's in a karma. So, so we have to, this is very important because, yes. because what, is, what is Buddha's teaching? Buddha's teaching is this, in that you are your own, you can, you, you're the only one who can control your own destiny. Okay? What that means is that for everything that happens, you need a condition. If you want to, if you want to change the effect, given the initial condition, then you can change. You can actually change the effect by changing the condition. So, in other words, going back to to the the thinking of the time. Which is which comes from North India and it comes from this 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 overbearing caste system, which is which is really a political system, disguised as a as a religious system. But that's all always that's always what religious religion is is that it's, it's something else disguised as, as religion, mm -hmm. which is true. If you study history, that's how Catholicism started, sure. because the emperor needed something to 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 in, in his in his arsenal. But anyway, the the point is that what what Buddha is saying is that no, that's not true. That's not true. Just because you were born in a higher caste, you can come back in a lower caste. Or just because you're in a lower caste, you can someday become the higher caste because you can control your destiny. That's why you see, a ma Buddha was the only master at the time who accepted students from the lower caste. Yes. Because everybody else just throw up yeah, their hands, exactly, just throw yeah. their hands and says, no, you, there's nothing you can do. Right. You know, the best it, it, you can do. Yeah, that's why I like the definition action because what you what what what, what we think, um, speak, and act matters. It's gonna have it has a potential um, outcome. It not maybe not immediately, but down you know, uh, fruit down the road. So yeah. if we can, and that's where that's where we really have a huge choice is how we frame a situation, how we view it, right? The first. First um, of the Eightfold Noble Path, and then how we respond to it. Yeah, those we have constant choices in life, and yeah. those choices matter and will can uh, either wait, will they cause or condition future um, outcomes? Um, yeah. maybe yeah. both, right? Yeah. So, so you and you then, mentioned the the uh, the Arahans, the the, yes. the 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 Arahans are the are the are the people who have practiced to a point where they they escaped uh, samsara, and so how do they do that? Um, they don't do that by filtering the karma. See, there's no filtering, right? There's no filtering. You can't just say, "Hey, here's my karma. You know, I'll pay. I'll pay you. You know, what's your hourly wage? And you know, clean that for me." You can't just, you know, you can't just say, "Say, you know, three ma say hell Mary and be done with it." You can't. <laughs> that's not what we believe. You cannot cleanse. There's th because it's in your karma, and therefore it's your karma because it's 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 cosmic. So what can you do if you couldn't filter? Well, you can you can let it settle. You can do sentimentation. So so the whole the word chan is a abbreviation for the word chana, which Chinese, which is a which is which comes from the word jana. That's sentimentation. That's actually what what it means is that is that we learn we we learn to use a body as a as an early warning system. So that when one of the bad seed, a kusala seed comes out from a karma, we recognize it and we don't follow it. But also not uh, mm. pretend it's not there and run and away not pretend from it that it's not there. Yeah. So this is this is this is something very important in that in that people misunderstood what what um, what meditation means and they think that it's all about just sitting there and not think about anything. Now the problem is that most people who do most people who practice meditation get benefit from just not thinking. 
you know, they get benefit from just not thinking. So, so it's very easy for them to say, oh, that's a, so that's what meditation is. It's like going to the going go, going to a, a, a tank where you're deprived of your sensation. You know, they think that's meditation. In fact, meditation is not that at all. Meditation is has that calming effect, slowing it down, but fully aware of your surrounding. Fully and aware yes, of your surrounding. Not only does yeah. the mind quiet, yeah, but we actually get the 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 capacity for you know um, a greater expanded awareness increases as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so I want to I want to make sure that if there's anybody out there who's listening and and karma, the sort of the misunderstanding of karma or, or what we call misunderstanding or, or the, the kind of a... That's the original definition of karma. Buddha came along and redefined that. And rather than saying that karma is like the conditions, unchangeable conditions that no matter what you do, that's who you became. No, it's not that. Karma is the initial condition. Okay? But you can change the outcome by changing the boundary condition. Okay. By changing the what condition? Well, in, in engineering, it, we call it the boundary. Boundary condition. Okay. Boundary conditions. You know. So and, and this yeah. is not also. This is also to not confuse it with trying to um, line up external conditions just right and thinking that's going to make us happy too. Because a lot of people mistake that in their life too, right? If I can just get you know, my life in order on the outside, then everything's going to be okay. If I can just you know, get a, a nice place to live, a good job, and, um, you know, and, and the wife and kids, and, and just have my six pack on the Sunday, everything's going to be smooth sailing. Well, I mean, to a, maybe to a certain extent, but the thing is that that's a recipe for in the long run that's not gonna that's not going to bring ultimate fulfilling happiness right well so, i i wouldn't go as far as saying that right. that yep. money doesn't buy you happiness okay so i'm not that person so so i i was asked that question one time yeah right you know what what makes you happy poor or, or rich and I, I said i've been both i've been both i've been very very poor i've been very very rich so i can tell you the difference but i said before i explained the difference i said that is, again, another fundamental teaching from Buddha, because if you go back to what we call five skandhas are empty, this is another thing that is, is misunderstood. Maybe we can talk about that in the future. But very briefly, in this case, emptiness doesn't mean, empty doesn't mean emptiness. Empty, in this case, is empty of something. In other words, everything can be changed, right? Because, because it's, it's empty of 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 rules and regulations, right? So it's, it's a, a person who kills someone can still become a good person. A person who's always been following the rule, you know, uh, example, exemplary person in the society can one day make a mistake and became a murderer. Anything can happen. It all has to do with the condition. And so, so th for me, five standards are empty is the ultimate freedom. But what does freedom mean? Freedom means choice. If you don't have, if, if I, I'm not giving you choice, there is no freedom. I can choose, and that's a freedom. So the question is, what is freedom in, in material sense? Well, material sense means that you now have resources, and then you can choose to do this, or you can choose to do that, right? So poor, it's very hard for a poor person to choose his material, okay? But on the other hand, the freedom could be on in, in the spiritual level. That's freedom from. That's yeah. So so, but the problem is that we can't really choose. We don't know how to choose. We don't have we don't have the tool. And so the Buddhist teaching is all about giving you the tools so that now you know the choices. Because if you didn't know the choices, there's nothing to choose from. And even if you know the choices, but you didn't have the skill, the training to choose, then there's nothing you can do. Then it's as if you didn't have any choice. Discernment, so, yes. Yeah, so Buddhist teaching, it's all about choice. It's all about freedom. It's just that we take it from the material level to more of a spiritual level. So now, going back to the question is that what, what buys you happiness? So, so I was asked that question, and you know, do you find yourself being a happy person when you're poor or being a happy person when you're, when you're rich? And I said, wait a minute, <laughs> I've been both. 
But let me tell you this. I said, it all comes down to a choice. If you're poor, you can choose to be happy. <laughs> but if you're rich, you can choose to be miserable. <laughs> okay? Well, yeah, yeah, basic needs are covered. You ha everybody has to have basic needs covered, right? Yeah, yeah, because if you don't have your basic needs, it's yes, a miserable exactly. life. Exactly. And then yeah. a lot of times, no matter how much you have, people always want more, you know? You could have very little money and there's people, not necessarily, not everybody, but I mean, even super rich people, they don't have enough, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, this is, we. I mean, pretty much everybody agrees that we can't really do much spiritually if you, your basic needs aren't covered, you know? That's um, right, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's um, right. I just wanted to go into or uh, just rattle off some of the how uh, profound this this karma stuff is. Like it's got six causes: acting causes, simultaneously arising causes, congruent causes, equal status clauses, driving. Um, I'm sorry, causes, not clauses. Ripening cause. So all these are stuff that people can look up um, later. Um, and then there's four conditions: uh, causal conditions, immediately preceding conditions. Vocal condition, uh, conditions, dominating conditions, and then lastly, the five type of results, ripened results, results that correspond to their cause, dominating results, man-made results, results that are states of being parted. So all those are teachings that were given, but I mean, it goes way, way, way beyond uh, all that stuff. And also, not everything is karma either. There's other forces um, in the world that, that we've um, that we studied about that I, I'm, I can't really speak to because I'm not that well versed, but not everything that we see that happens in life is a karmic um, um, uh, uh, effect or a karmic um, um, See, you know, a seed or a fruit, right? So there's other forces at play as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. Now, the, and then the other thing, when I was looking into this, the Jain, Jainist religion, which is one I know hardly anything about, they have a huge long list of all this detailed teachings on karma. And, and it's interesting, Buddha, the historical Buddha's um, interactions with, with that um, religion and the, the founder of that. Um, the, what was it? Uh, Okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask, going way back to the beginning of this, the Aryans. So where did the Aryans come from that came into India? Where did they come from? I, I don't know exactly because I know that it's it's not um, it's it's in the north. It's it's in in the north. Probably what we would refer to today as the middle of Europe, which would be ah, you know see. not exactly Russia, but not exactly you know Germany. So Eastern Europe then. Eastern Europe. Kind of um, in you know that area, that okay. area. I, I would I would I would probably think maybe part of it is is uh, it's it's a cold, very very. You no, know, so so again, it, it the migration was the result of 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 uh, climate climate disasters, and it's just that it was the reverse at that time. It was not the warming, but the cooling down of the of the planet. So where they live becomes uninhabitable, and so they have to move away. Yeah. One of the other things I found fascinating when we were studying this is, you know, how uh, in the Buddhist time, historically, it goes back to, um, you know, well, today it's Hinduism. Before that, it was um, the Vedas, stuff based on the Vedas. And then before, where, well, where did the Vedas come from? Well, if I'm getting this right, it came from, Zor um, from Iran and Persia area, which was influenced by Zoroastrianism. And that's something I haven't studied either. And, it's, and I have, you know, I haven't even, if you just keep going back and back and back. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think that's yeah. pretty a mystical um, uh, religion, isn't it? I'm not, I don't know anything really about Zoroastrianism, but I just thought, I'm always interested in the origin of things and tracing back as far well, as when you, when you when you go back far enough, you realize that one thing that they all, in common, they all have in common, including the, the, the traditional Abrahamic religion, is that they're all vegetarians. Huh. I'm trying to think of in the Bible now. Uh, so about, when you, when you for example, for example, in India, huh? in India, the 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 uh, many of my students when I was teaching at UCLA, many of my students came from India and they were born to uh, a vegetarian. Because their family go back many many generations were all vegetarians because they they believe that they're the descendants of the Brahmin king. Ah, uh, okay. And if they if they're not vegetarians, they can never go back. So they, you know, so a lot of times when they don't cross marry between castes, it's because the the kind of a generic pool, you know, they believed of the purity of the generic pool. 
-hmm. And so many of them are uh, vegetarian. So the Jainism, you mentioned the Jainism, the yeah, Jainism, they, they are vegetarian to the extreme where yeah, they Buddha wouldn't even extreme, eat potato. Yeah. Yeah. Any root vegetable they won't eat because they believe that, that by eating them, you're actually killing. And that's another thing I want to talk about yeah. when I said the intent. So that really affects uh, the karma. You know, there's uh, the classic thing is if you're if you're walking and you step on an ant uh, and don't see it, then it's it's not going to have a karmic bearing. Yeah. But it, right. but if you deliberately go out and say right. I want to kill that for this reason, right. that's going to have an effect. Same way with like if even if things as small as washing out your bowl, if it has little food scraps, if you mm -hmm. toss that on the ground, this is in the suttas uh, with the intent. Um, to help the insects, you know, live and carry on life, that can have positive benefits compared to this. Yeah, minus yeah. it's all mental. It's all, all mental volition. Yes. So, so just volition because intent, you yeah. didn't actually hurt anyone, just thinking about it already causes bad karma. Uh, well, possibly, but very then very again, I mean, yeah. that's a tricky question too because you know um, when we talk about not self teachings. Well, who actually had that thought? You know, how how do we discern between well? Sometimes if we're meditating and you just this thought pops into our heads like well I didn't think that where did that come from that's that's silly you know um, mm -hmm. you know um, things like that happen you're like yeah. um, I wouldn't have thought that w w yeah. why am I, why is that thought there you know yeah. so it's, well it's, let me let me finish yeah. let me finish sure. with the vegetarian story so mm -hmm. so the Christians are many of the Christians are vegetarians the twelve Adventists twelve day Adventists they're vegetarians. Why is that? Well, what, what, is, what, what are the things that the 12 day Adventists do? Well, first of all, they, they, they worship on Saturday, Sabbat, the day of Sabbat. Because the Sunday was the first day of the week. Sunday was the day that God created the earth and the, and the air and, the, and, and all that. Sunday was the day. Saturday. Sunday was the, well, Sunday was the day of rest. No, okay. Saturday is the day of rest. Huh. Okay. Well, one of the days was nothing. So I thought that was yeah, a Sunday. Yeah, Saturday, Sabbat, sabbatical. Okay. That's what okay. it means. It's a seven day. It's a day I of see. rest. So okay. when I was a professor, you know, we take sabbatical every seven years. I see. Okay. That's where the word comes from. Okay. So but, but how did it become Sunday? Well, because when, when, when Christianity uh, was taken to Europe and, and, and at first all the Christians were, 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 were killed, right? They were got thrown into the lion, right? But eventually, the king, one of the king, decided that they, he, he, he's, you know, he wants to promote that religion. But at that time, the worship of, of sun god was very important. So he kind of changed that, so that the the day of worship was a Sunday, just so that people can adopt. But but Constantine in the Council of Nicaea. Yeah, but but if you if you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, the Book of Genesis talks about how on this on this on the sixth day. God created Adam, and He gave him very specific instructions. Because all along, the, the, there was a distinction between creating plants that have fruit and plants that were just grain. Oh yeah, and or, or just grass. So He gave very specific instructions. He says, the, "Those fruits are for you. Those and grains and grass too. are for the animals, and the animals are your friend. So now don't eat them." <laughs> Well, then, 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 then there's the interpretation that you're the caretaker of the, um, or you know, masters over the, the the animal life on. So, and then the breath in the Bible is, you know, that's how man was created in the Bible, right? And that how mm -hmm. important that is in, in Buddhism as well, right? So that's a yeah. very fascinating topic. But very we're, yeah, we're we're, we're winding we're winding down here, and also I just wanted for anybody if it's listening that's first time, uh, Master Jiru, the very first question is. Um, the, the abbot and um, a monk and um, um, venerable uh, and chifu at uh, Mid America Buddhist Association, where sometimes I practice and study. And I, he's got um, temples all over the place too, right, Denny? Or how would you? We, we, you described him last time as our mutual Dharma master as well. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got distracted. Yeah, yeah. So, so he has. Th that's right. So, so, so the, he's he's. Um, the, the Buddhist teaching is the Buddhist teaching is such that they don't call it their home. That it's not a home, you know. So it's not like he belongs to a temple. It's not that. It's not the that. In fact, the, yeah. the Chinese yeah. word for for his presence comes from two characters. One has to do with the the, the stake, 
that they carry. And the other one has to do with like, it's almost like the same word that we use when, when we used to have the Pony Express. Okay. And you, you take, you know, so th there's always these stops that you have to make. Like a relay or yeah. Yeah, yeah the relay. Yeah. So, so, so the, the idea is that he's, he's walking around with his, his Dharma stick and okay. he's just making temporary stops. Okay, so, so the one, so when we say Maba, which is, which is what Josh is most familiar with, yes. is the place where he happened to be today, right, yes. right? But it's not his permanent home, and he'll be worried, the first one to tell you that sure. he has no permanent home. Okay, right. but having yes. said that, he, he actually is the abbot for three other temples. Two of them is in, in Chicago, and one of them is in San Francisco, where I often go uh, before the pandemic, of course. But then he, he, he regularly teaches in four other temples. So, I see. He, yeah. So he's Taiwan he's, is one of them. And... Taiwan, uh, Texas, uh, uh, China, you know, Malaysia, yeah. various, various places. He, he traveled. Yeah. He used to travel. I would tell you back, back the days when he, when he traveled, he, I, would, I would say this. I would say he spent one third of his time in St. Louis. Huh. And almost 98% of that one third is he's a farmer, basically, <laughs> or a handyman. You know, he's too busy working because that's his I'll practice. tell you what, the teachings yeah. I got through that, through him, I, I can't really even uh, describe. So um, it yeah. seems a little silly, but it's, I have it's, to tell you, I, I first time, first time I arrived in St. Louis, I, mm -hmm. he, he hasn't finished that Blue Lotus house yet. Yeah. And I didn't quite know anyone. I didn't quite. So he saw me doing this. He said, well, I need to put this guy to work. So he gave me this, this sand sender and and then he said okay send this down but don't make it too smooth and so i'm like sanding and sanding and then you know that my hands are vibrating and then i have to stop and touch make sure it's not too smooth and in retrospect he was teaching me the mindfulness of the feeling <laughs> you were anyway, trying to turn anyway. that into a mirror were you yeah, yeah. <laughs> Classic anyway story. anyway okay. uh yeah yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. well i really enjoyed this josh Likewise. Another good it. one. Another good one. Another good one. All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, see you and see you all next month. Next that's month. Yeah. Last yep. Tuesday of the of the month, I think. That's how. Yes. We, that's what we agree on now. Noon, yeah. uh, Last time Central. we weren't sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for right. for spending time with me. Well, and thanks for yeah. recording this and uh, putting out the documents and invites. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye, Denny. Bye, bye.